Welcome everybody to Zero to Income. We're glad to have you here. I'm Sean, I'm here with Dana, and we're helping you get your businesses started. We wanna help you move from financial dependence to financial freedom. From dreaming to achieving. From blindly following the masses to being an independent thinker. From zero to income. Welcome to the Zero to Income podcast. Today is Wednesday, December 13th. We are walking through the Sermon on the Mount as recorded in the book of Matthew. As we take these pieces and we start aligning ourselves to these pieces, we are going to find friction. When we align to the commands of Christ, there is going to be friction. No question, because this is counter it's, an, it's counterintuitive. It's counter the things of this world. It's counter what many who claim to be Christians in the workspace, it's, it's counter what they're telling us to do, uh, whether they're just well, well-intended, misguided, it doesn't matter. We're not going to get into, into casting judgment um, on them. But when we seek what God has put on our hearts, we find ourselves aligning to a new set of principles. Those principles, those precepts, those commandments for obedience from the Lord God Almighty through Jesus Christ, as he's, as he's presenting this to the multitude, as he's presenting these things to his disciples, it's hard. Let's just call it what it is. It's very hard. We've got all of these voices around us that are trying to suck us into a particular mindset, a particular way to operate for our business. Some of that might be an attempt to find other people that will believe the things that we're saying and believe the things that they're saying and get sucked into a mode of operation uh, because, hey, they're doing it too. Uh, it, you know, I made it work for me and I'm going to make it work for somebody else. And uh, I'm going to pursue the things of, I'm going to come up with excuses why God's word, like why certain things mean certain things in God's word. And I'm, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this, but let me give you an example. On the podcast, if you weeks ago, I brought up about the parable of the talents and how that parable actually ties into as well can tie together with the sower and the seed, the seed being the message of the kingdom, the, the, the servant that buried his talent and didn't do anything with it, um, said to had an excuse for the master. When he came home, he said, I know that you're a hard master and you reap where you do not sow. You gather where you have not planted. So I hid it out of fear. I hid what you gave me out of fear. And that parable is so often misquoted. I admit I have even misquoted that myself probably many, many times. And then I was challenged to think about that, that parable in a different light. And it's like my eyes were opened to what the Lord was really saying in the passage. We tend to, I'm going to say Christian entrepreneurs, those who have labeled themselves as Christian, right? Let's just, let's, let's leave it really z- generic. Those that have maybe labeled themselves, oh, I'm a Christian. Well, you know, being a, being a believer is much more than saying something in word, um, but those that have labeled themselves Christians often quote the parable of the talents as a reason for operating investments a certain kind of way. But that is not the heart of the parable of the talents. At some point, somebody with a business mindset was searching the scriptures and said, wow, look at that one. I'm going to cling to that. and I'm going to claim that. Well, this passage that we're going to get into today is another one of those passages that pe- people will 
take it, they'll cling to it, but not truly understand what the passage is saying. Uh, we've got this superficial interpretation that these are about the things of this world when they're actually about the things of the kingdom. As we've, as we've gone through the Sermon on the Mount, every, every stopping point on this journey, every little story, uh, every little tidbit that the Lord gives is about aligning ourselves to new boundaries, new rules, guidelines, and that is the kingdom of the Lord. He is aligning us to a different set of rules for the purposes of aligning the kingdom of this earth back to the kingdom of God, right? He's, he's bringing his kingdom back and he's, he's this, this kingdom of this earth is going to go away and he's bringing it back into alignment. And, it, and there's a lot of support for that in scripture. And, and we don't have time to get into that now, but I, I've mentioned before that I've been reading in the book of Revelation. It's, it's very prominent there. Um, and many other passages of Scripture. So anyway, with that, that's a lot of rambling, and I apologize for that. Let's dive into what's really important here, and that is listening to the Word of God. This is Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which of you, if he has a son asking for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, uh, asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give, give good gifts to those who ask him? Now, let me ask you, have you heard this misquoted? Have you heard this passage abused? And meaning that anything we ask, the Father is going to, it's his desire to give it to us. Anything we ask, anything we ask. And, and at the surface level, when you look at the passage, that seems like what it says. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. And we've got this great Santa in the sky who's just going to meet our every, uh, every desire. What are conditions for asking for something of God? Because we look at this and we say, oh, God, you know what? Our van, I'm sick of all the little onesie twosie issues. We just had to put a new battery in it. And I'm just tired of all of these things that are going, and battery's not very expensive, <laughs> but I'm tired of all these things going wrong in our 2005 Sienna with 212,000 miles on it. It's just, uh, it's done. Like I, this, this vehicle probably needs to go. God, give us a new van. On the surface, it doesn't seem to be anything you know, disrespectful, harmful about a request like that. Give us, give us uh, good, reliable transportation. Um, it's okay to ask for that, right? Before the Lord. But where does this tie back to? And what are the, where, where's the boundary? Because I can ask for things like that. And then I can say, God, give me a brand new uh, 2024 Tahoe. Is that realistic? God, Give me a great retirement account so that I can retire with ease. So what, what point does a request become outlandish? When we look at this, we see, you know what? We're going to pause. Let's stop here. Take a break. Let it just sink in for a second. Think about at what point a request of yours becomes kind of like that outlandish request before God. Now I know I'm making an assumption with that statement that there are outlandish requests. There's no question that I'm making that assumption here. Okay. Uh, however, just think about it in your own heart and life. What, what do you think is an outlandish request of God? Sean and I would like to invite you to say goodbye 
to spending countless hours and countless dollars in trying to launch your business. Personally, I've spent over $20,000 on two ideas trying to get them launched with companies that promised to help me all along the way only to find that things were very complicated, they were guessing, and neither of them truly helped me launch my business. Sean and I discovered that there are very easy tools, very easy ways for you to get your business launched, and we invite you to take part of that. Join us on this adventure. Go to zero2income.com to learn more. Z-E-R-O, the number two, income.com, and learn more. This episode, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I, I feel like I'm, I've got so much to say and I'm trying to pack it in. I feel like I'm taking all these rabbit trails and rambling. Let's get back to the nuts and bolts here. Let's think about the outlandish request that you would have before God. What would that outlandish request be? What would you ask God that's just completely outlandish? God, just, Lord, would you just give me a mansion and let me never have to worry about money again? And give me, you know what, three car, four cars would be good for when one breaks down, four cars would be okay. Um, you know, our, our youngest is starting to drive. It sure would be nice to have a nice new car for him. Um, my, my wife's van, you know what, that needs to be replaced. You know, the Hyundai I drive, it's not, it's a great car. I like the car and thank you for it. But God, would you give me something a little nicer? What, at what point do these requests become outlandish? So we know by that standard, we can look at this passage and say, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find. We know it does not apply to everything. We can tell that by the absurdity that we can go to um, in, in our requests. Here's, where, here's what's, what's cool about this passage and where it's placed right now. Think about this. Okay, so we've, we've had... Uh, passages talking about when you give to the needy, when you pray, when you fast. Then he talks about laying up in, tre- and I'm, I'm back in chapter six here, laying up treasures in heaven, right? Uh, and then about being anxious and then about judging people. And we've got, if we go back to six uh, verses uh, nine through 13, we have the prayer right? That Jesus prayed the model prayer that we've all heard so many times, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. That's a pause for effect. (laughs) Give us this day our daily bread. Let's come back to verse seven. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a serpent? This is about prayer, This is also tying back to Jesus' model prayer that he gives, that when we're asking, we're asking about needs, not outland all all these outlandish things. We're asking for him to meet needs in this world. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give you good gifts? to those who give good things to those who ask him. I misquoted that a little bit. I want to be a good father to my child. When my child comes to me and says, Dad, will you make breakfast? <laughs> a lot of, th- okay, yeah, I'll make you breakfast. I mean, we get a lot of things that he can grab and eat and, and everything, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to serve my child. I'm going to make him some breakfast. He's going to hate it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's going to be, it's, it's going to, you know, a lot of times pancakes is a go-to. Like he loves pancakes. I'm going to make him breakfast. I want to give him what's good. I want to give him good gifts. If he comes to me and says, dad, I want you to make me breakfast. 
But what I want for breakfast is um, three eggs um, over medium with uh, one and a half slices of toast, buttered with the premium butter, please. Oh, and when you use the salt, make sure you're using that Himalayan salt on my eggs uh, and the crushed, uh, the crushed, uh, hand crushed uh, pepper on them as well, please. Um, oh, you know what? And I would like a glass of orange juice, except would you serve that to me in a wine glass? And uh, yeah, let's see, what else do I need? Um, and then rattles off this big list. And then he says, oh, and by the way, dad, can you put that on a nice tray and walk that up to me uh, in my room for breakfast? Uh, uh, for in, in my bedroom so I can have breakfast in my bedroom in bed. And he does all this texting me because uh, he's, you know, I haven't even talked to him. Uh, so he texts me all of this and says, hey, this is what, this is what I'm looking for. And, and follow this all to a T, please. Because I, it needs to be just right, Dad. I mean, that's kind of, you, we could go as, as outlandish as we want with the request that he's making for breakfast. Maybe you don't think that was an outlandish request. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not doing that, buddy. You're coming downstairs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you some breakfast, but you're going to come downstairs and you're going to eat it. And we're probably going to eat together. Um, this is, we, we can go so over the top. So what are the good gifts? That our father, taking that same perspective, fathers, mothers out there, take that same perspective. What are the good gifts that your father, your heavenly father wants to give you out of his great goodness? Can we align to asking about needs, the needs of ourselves, the needs of others? Can we align to that? And can be, we be satisfied? Can we even recognize it sometimes when God gives it to us? I think that's hard too. How do we recognize the good gifts that the Father has given us? I would encourage you to log it, to write it down. Actually, I, I started using a prayer journal about uh, two weeks ago, and I've noticed an incredible change in the way that I think about prayer. What I do is I, I here's tool tip time. Um, I have a, a little journal and I have a column in it for the date, a column for the request. And then on the right hand page, I have a column for the date and a column for the response. What I started doing was just jotting down even the little things that I'm asking of God. And I've seen his hand move in ways that I would have never recognized before. Uh, I mentioned the, our, our van, our battery, and I'm like, I, I told my wife, I said, I'm not going to charge it. I'm, I, no pun intended. I'm not going to charge it. I'm not going to put it on a credit card. I'm not just going to walk into a, a car place and put it on a credit card. I'm asking that the Lord meet this need. And... Um, my wife didn't say anything <laughs> the first time I said that. Uh, and, and then um, I, I was coming home from work after having to have a jump to, uh, to leave work. And, and it was Aaron's, um, Aaron's choral uh, concert last night at the school, and I wanted to be able to make it. Angela, my wife, was already there. And I said, you know, um, I'm headed home from, from work not sure. I'm wondering if you might be able to give me a ride. I just don't want to get to the school and then have to need a jump after. And she's like, oh my goodness, that's going to kind of be busy. You know what? I've got some cash. Why don't you, she told me where the cash was. Why don't you just take that cash out of there and go get the, go get the battery replaced. You know what? In eternity's past, my heavenly father knew that we were going to have that cash sitting there. I didn't even know about it. Not, not, I'm not bashing. I'm not, this isn't about <laughs> getting on your spouse, but I had no idea. I'm, I'm, I'm Angela's the finance one. I am, I'm oblivious to what goes on in the checkbook. Um, other than the fact that she tells me every once in a while, Hey, don't spend any money right now. But I'm like, I'm not going to charge this. I'm not going to put it on a credit card. God, please provide this. And I put it as a prayer request. I could so easily charge that. 
But I put down his prayer request. I said, Lord, would you provide this in a way that I don't have to charge it right now because I'm I'm trying to to be better about not extending credit and, and all of that. And the Lord answered my request. He knew in eternity's past that my wife being diligent and frugal was going to set aside some cash in a drawer that we would probably forget about. And then she tells me, go grab that ca- some of that cash and go um, get that battery done so that you can make it to your son's choir uh, concert. That's God moving in the background, doing things that we don't know, that we don't understand, him meeting needs in different ways. Have you been in a pinch sometime and you're just like, God, oh, do this, please do this. And it's in a fleeting moment, then you kind of forget about it, and then all of a sudden you get news that it was done. Is your immediate response, oh, well, that was just coincidence? Or is it, you know what, God, I am going to praise you. I am going to praise you because that came to pass. You did it. It's your hand. I, I asked and you gave. I sought you. I found you. I knocked on your door and it was open, Lord. You did it. So why do we have this idea of skepticism when it comes to prayer? I've wrapped so much stuff into this, uh, guys. I, I, I kind of feel I'm apologetic because I try and, and stay concise onto a point, but this one's got so many tentacles to it. We have to be so careful when it comes to prayer in our lives and that we are asking God for the right things. Go back, please study that, um, that Lord's Prayer. Uh, I love you all. Let me just say that, and let's give our day to God. God, you are the only one that can meet our needs. Everything else is temporal. Father, may we rest in you this day. May we be encouraged by your spirit this day. May you be glorified in our actions and our prayer this day. Would you remind us of all of the abundant ways that you answer our requests for for us, Lord, and would would be, be truly grateful, truly grateful to you. Almighty God, who hears us, who hears our cry, so many times called out in the Psalms, Lord, you hear when I cry to you. God, you are a good God. Please guide us this day in all aspects of life, personal, as well as business. You take this day and do with it as you will. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day. On behalf of Sean Elliott and myself, Dana Morrison, we'd like to say thank you sincerely for listening to this episode. We hope that it helps you on your entrepreneurial journey. Uh, truly thank you for being here. If you would like to learn more about Zero to Income and be informed as tools and resources are released, we hope that you will take the time to get on the mailing list. Just go to zero2income.com, Z-E-R-O, the number two, income.com and get on the mailing list to be informed as tools and resources are released. If you like this episode, we hope that you will like it, review it, share it with those around you that are entrepreneurial minded. Thank you so much for being here.